session, um, you need a mat, a chair, yoga strap, and possibly a cushion if your chair isn't very soft. Okay, so not quite ready, hang on. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start on the ground. We're going to start with um, hip synchronizers, which we're going to do for two minutes. So we'll open up our hips. So lying down onto the ground, your feet are just wider than hip width apart, okay? Arms are at the side, palms up, head is down, and we're just going to drop the knees one side and then slowly to the other side, okay? We've done this many times. Okay, are you ready? In three, two, one, let's go. You nice and gentle. If you get all the way to the ground, great, but remember you're not going to force anything. We just want to create movement in the hips. We're not trying to reach any particular end goal. There shouldn't be any pain and there shouldn't be any pinching either. If there is, reduce the movement. If you find that you go lower to one side than the other, just try and equal the heights on both sides. So reduce the movement a little on the side where there's more mobility. So we're going the same height to the left as we do to the right. In an ideal world, it will feel equally mobile from the left to the right. If you do find that one side is tighter, it just means you need to mobilize more. Or if you've uh, started to, to do introduce, get my words out, daily mobility, then just keep going. It takes time to restore mobility. It doesn't happen overnight. Good work. We've got 30 seconds left here. Okay, and relax there. Okay, into a seated position. So we're going to work on internal hip rotation now. So take the feet just wider than the mat. Oh, it feels cold. <laughs> okay, and now we're just going to drop one hip in, and then we drop the other hip in. What I want you to see is you really turn, because it's really easy to get the knee to the ground if you twist the body. So keep the hips level, keep the hips in contact with the ground, both sides, and then just drop the knee in, okay? Right, we're just going to do this for one minute. If I don't twist my body at all, I'm, I'm not going to get to the ground, okay, which is fine. If I twist my body a little, then it's easy. Well, it's a lot tighter on my left side. I started introducing this exercise daily because I am so much tighter on this left side in internal hip rotation. Good, 10 more seconds. Now I want you to just add in a little bit of movement. So now you are going to twist to the side a little bit. If that's really easy, take out the slight twist.
And don't force anything. So don't be forcing that knee to the ground. Don't get a prize if the knee goes to the ground. <laughs> Yeah, we cover. Okay, we're going to come back and do another internal external rotation exercise, but for now, we're just going to do the pelvic tilt two minutes. So, feet on the ground, hip distance apart, feet are pointing forwards. Okay, hands on your pelvis, either side of your pelvis. Make sure you're not rotating one side to the other, so make sure you're right in the center here. Okay, and what we're going to do is tilt the pelvis forwards and tilt the pelvis back. Okay, you ready? Let's go. So tilt the pelvis back so the lower back flattens and then tilt the pelvis forward so the lower back arches. And we just keep moving along this horizontal axis. So forwards and backwards, mobilizing the pelvis. Here. Now, as we go forwards, you want to think about the hip flexors, bringing that pelvis forwards. As we go back, think about the glutes doing the work. See if you can engage with the correct muscle groups. You feel it more in your lower back as you tilt the pelvis forward. It's probably because you're using the lower back rather than using the hip flexors. The lower back started to take over. I brush the movement. This is one of the exercises I used to feel quite a lot of pain doing, so it feels so good every time I do it now, and it's like pain for anything. <laughs> so restricted with this movement when I first started mobility. One of the best ways to start the day with mobility feels so good after. I like to do my mobility in the morning or at lunchtime and then in the evening, the stretch. And we come. Okay, we're gonna come up to a standing position. And I'm going to show you a standing internal external hip rotation exercise. So just hook my mic back on. Okay, so you're holding on to something for balance. So if we um, left leg on the ground, right leg just slightly off the ground in front. So not really far in front, just in front. Okay, keep the hips facing forward so I don't twist the pelvis. Okay, and I just want you to rotate the hip that way. Come back to the center and rotate the hip that way. So you're going to hold each position for two seconds. Okay, I'm going to start the timing now. So you're just going to go for one minute. So externally rotate the hip, hold one, two, come back to the center. Internally rotate the hip, hold one, two, back to the center. And just keep doing that. Don't twist the body, just the hip. So we move into external rotation at the hip, and then we move into internal rotation at the hip. And just have a look at your degree of movement, because I want you to compare it to the other side, and we go to the other side. In an ideal world, both sides will be equally mobile. <laughs> in my world, they're not equal. <laughs> it's a work in progress. I think back to like years ago, I mean, we're talking like probably 25 years ago, 20, 25 years ago, when I was so, so injured. Um, and I think now, when I look at my body now, I know so much more, and there's still so much to work on now, and not on, Luckily, I'm not injured now, but I think at that time I didn't know any of this stuff and, and I was so confused why I always got so injured. Now we have a change size. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing this side. So externally rotate, so mine is much more tight, much tighter that side, not so bad that side. Good. You can just feel the restriction. The other side felt free to externally rotate. This side does not feel free. Yeah, and I remember going to physios and like all sorts of practitioners and nobody, nobody looked at things like this. They just dealt with the issue, whether it was a groin strain, they just dealt with the groin. And it's not to criticize anybody, it's just, now I think like, 
we're so we so much used more used to now looking at the entire body and think about how everything's connected not just we have a groin strain let's treat the groin it's like well why is there why are you repeatedly getting groin strain what is going on elsewhere and treating the whole body rather than just one particular area and i have still have many imbalances i'm working on but it's getting so much better now we clap right we're going to repeat one more time each side and it's fun. I like working on my imbalances. I don't like being injured, but luckily you don't have to have a perfect body <laughs> to remain injury free. But you still want to work towards having a balanced body. The time these things can result in injuries when you start to up the pace or up the distance, up the intensity. Engage with sports that are very demanding. That's when these things can become a problem so you want to find joy in trying to work on these things and seeing the progress All right, let's change size last time. Let's go. <laughs> oh my god, I just feel so different going into external rotation on this side. It's like, <laughs> And you just think like when one when there's imbalance in the body, generally what's happening is that one side of the body is working hard and overworking, and the other side of the body is underworking. And this is where it leads to issues. So when we're trying to restore balance, we're trying to also restore movement, getting muscles that haven't worked as hard for a long time, trying to get them to work again. So it's looking at the imbalances. Trying to restore correct movement, trying to reawaken, like we do when we do trying to activate the glutes, glutes that have been used to not working and not firing correctly. We've got to get them firing again and recover. And it's fun. <laughs> well, I think it's fun. Okay, down onto the ground. Everyone really wants perfection overnight or within like four weeks or something like that. Or give me an exercise that's going to solve anything. Oh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> It takes time. Right, are we ready? Crawling in place. Okay, so hands down, head down, opposite arm, opposite leg, and then down, and then change sides. Okay, we're gonna keep this going for three minutes. Okay, so let's go. So the goal of this movement, okay, is to get the hip and the shoulder working together. Now when you run and when you walk, it's a contralateral exercise. So you're using the opposite arm and the opposite leg, the opposite hip and the opposite shoulder. And that's what I talk about when I'm talking about imbalances and restoring correct movement. That's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to get the hip and the opposite shoulder to work together because that is what should happen. When we've got compensations, this movement starts to become, hmm, not what the correct word is. <laughs> Now you might find that one shoulder, one arm goes all the way down to the ground quite easily and the other arm doesn't. That's okay, don't force the other arm down to the ground. What I want you to do is keep the arm nice and straight and just go as far as your range of movement will allow you to go and then come back down. Good. If we don't use our body and we don't use our joints for their full range of movement during the week that we're meant to, they will become more and more restricted and you will lose that mobility. It's the same as when you see people getting older, or not even getting older, moving less and less, so they walk less. Their balance gets poorer, so they walk even less because they're worried about falling. And then they start to become very, very tight. You see the posture change. You see the movement change. 
And that's why movement's so, so important. It doesn't matter what you do, just find joy in what you're doing. So whether it's yoga, whether it's mobility, whatever it is, to me, there's no magic formula. It is just keep moving. Just find joy in it and keep doing it. And recover. Okay, right. I'm going to go slightly over there. I'm going to do this last exercise. So this is where you need your chair, okay, and possibly your yoga strap. So this is called neutral position. This is one of my favorite exercises at the moment. So it's a really simple, low-level, chilled-out exercise. You can do this anytime, okay. Right, so you want your chair. If your chair's hard, then you need to um, put like a cushion or a pillow under the chair, okay. Right, you may need a yoga strap, you may not, it depends. So, first of all, I want you to get right into the chair, okay. You can see me okay, yes. So you're as close into the chair as you can, right. Now, just relax your legs, just let them go, just relax and let them go where they go. Now, do they look the same? Do they look equal? Now, I can see that my left leg just drops out slightly more than my right. And you will see that on my squat as well. So this is something I'm working on. So if your legs look pretty much parallel to each other, they look even, that's fine. You can just relax into the position. You're going to put your hands behind your head like this and just hold there, okay? If your legs look different and your hips are doing different things, put the yoga strap above your knees, Okay, and then you're going to tighten the yoga strap until both legs look like they're in a similar position. Okay, that's good. Okay, we'll start the timer now. Put the hands by your head. And then this is it. <laughs> okay, you stay here for the minimum five minutes. Now, this exercise you can do uh, up to 10 minutes, 20 even 60 minutes to reset posture. What I don't want you to do is not use the yoga strap and use muscular energy to hold the legs in position. That's not what I want. The yoga strap's there so you can relax. The hips are now in the correct position and I just want you to relax into that. Your hands are by your head. So now we're opening up the chest. Both shoulders are level now. If you're really tight in the chest or the shoulders, you might find that one arm sometimes and some people is off the ground, the other arm is flat to the ground. Just don't worry about it too much. Just get your hands behind your head and just try to relax. Make sure there's no rotation in the body so you're not rotating to one side compared to the other with the hips. Nice and neutral. And then just relax. So your upper body is, if we were to take this position and put you into a standing position, it's aligned as we want. So your upper body is stacked over your hips. Okay, your head is stacked in line with your upper body. Everything's in a nice straight line, okay? So that's the correct postural position. And this is that position lying on the floor. So we don't have to force anything here. We don't have to force correct posture. We can just relax into it. Now, for some people whose postures needs a bit of work, um, this might be quite challenging. So to start with, you might want to put a cushion um, underneath your head because it might be just too much to cope with. That's fine. And then you'll gradually work to working down towards the ground. This is a really nice exercise to do. I always put this last 
So do it in yoga class or if I do it at the um, in my own routine, I'm just always putting this last nice one to do right at the end of the day. I said to my partner, we need a TV on the ceiling so that I can watch the TV because this is a position I'm in most nights, just lying on the ground doing some form of uh, stretching or mobility and you can't quite see the TV on the wall. So the ceiling will be great. See how much time we've got. Yeah, we're over halfway, so hopefully that's quite a nice position. Somebody had said to me, probably even like two years ago, you're going to be doing daily mobility and stretching. And I thought, oh, God, I don't think so. <laughs> but you just kind of work it into your routine. And then when you feel the benefits, like I don't, I, if I go now for a few days without mobilizing or stretching, you know, if we go away or family over and they're exhausted, <laughs> I can really feel it in my body. Um, it feels so much better when I do my mobility and stretching. And, and I just know it's gonna go a long way to keeping me doing sports, moving well, running, all the things I love to do. So I just embrace it, enjoy it. And that's just part of, part of training. I wouldn't be without it. I've got under a minute to go. The other thing is on nights when you're really tired and think, I don't want to stretch, I'm too tired to stretch, just say to yourself, I'm just do a really easy stretch or something that takes no effort like this. Quite often once you start, you feel fine, you move on to other stretches. Sometimes when you're generally really shattered, this is all you'll do. And this is better than doing nothing. Something is always better than doing nothing. 10 more seconds and we're all done. Okay, bring the arms up. Okay, that's it. Ooh, I feel a little bit tight in the back coming out of that one. But it's really good for posture, that one. Really good, excellent. So just resetting the hips, um, teaching them to relax into the correct position. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you for joining me. Keep doing your daily mobility. Um, you can join me every Thursday at nine o'clock. Um, yeah, just enjoy it. <laughs> All right, have a good week.